In this episode of The Russell Brown Show, I'm going to be discussing how to create a panorama using a GoPro Hero 3 camera combined with a DJI Phantom quadcopter. Now this allows me to lift the camera into the sky, rotate the camera and take a series of photographs and then stitch them back together here in Adobe Photoshop CC. Okay, let's get this project started. Now to begin with, these are the settings that I'm using with my GoPro Hero 3 black camera. Right here at the top, I'm setting my photo resolution to 12 megapixels in a wide setting. This is the maximum resolution and I get my best results. Right here you can see that I'm setting it to a time-lapse mode with one frame shot every two seconds. Down here you can see that my spot meter is off. I prefer the results with the spot meter off. Also I should note that I'm using the auto white balance mode for my photography. Okay, this is my final result you see here, but let's switch over to Adobe Bridge and take a look at the series of images I photographed. Switching here, you can see those images. Now they're not color corrected and I haven't removed the distortion from the images yet and that's what this tutorial is all about. It's going to be an extensive detailed review of the steps I'm going to go through to create that final panorama. Let's take a look at these images. I'm using my right arrow key on my keyboard to move through each of the images I've photographed from the sky. Now notice I just rotate the camera slightly in the sky and I'm going to photograph an odd number of images. Notice I'm capturing one central image here of the focus of my final photograph and then on either side I'm photographing a series of images as you see here. Here to the right and then all the way to the left. And of course notice that I have a central focus right here in the middle, right down the middle of the quad here on the Stanford campus. That's important. Now, with this odd number of images, let's go through the step-by-step -step process of correcting the color and correcting the distortion that happens when you use the extreme wide angle on the GoPro Hero 3. Now, in order to remove this distortion, you must have the latest version of Adobe Camera Raw because in this version, you'll find a new set of profiles for the GoPro Hero 3 camera. Let's get started. I'm going to select all of the images here. And by the way, you notice that I'm just giving just a little bit of overlap to each of the images. And I find that about 15 images works really well for a panorama project like this. OK, let's get started. I'm going to select all of my images as you see here with Command A or Control A. Then I'm going to select Command R because my project begins in Adobe Camera Raw. The Command R key will open up any JPEG images into the adjustments available here inside of Adobe Camera Raw. Now this is where the magic happens for adjusting not only the color but the distortion removal. Over here to the left I'm going to do a Select All. And in fact I'm going to scroll down here until I select one of the more central images right here. Selecting this central image, then selecting Select All. This way I can focus in on the quality of this central image and then apply those same settings across all of the images. OK, the first step to this project is to get rid of the color cast. And then we can start to enhance the colors and make this look really, really nice. But we must set a gray value in the image so we don't have a cool or warm cast of the image, a more neutral image. To do that, you go right up here to the menu and select your white balance tool right here. Now, what is gray in your image? Now, there are a couple things in this image which are pure gray. And those are the clouds. And if I click on the clouds, I can then neutralize the image. or I can click on the pavement here because I know that should be a nice neutral gray. What I want to do is continue to click through the clouds or the neutral pavement until I get the tone I'm looking for. 
Now I could shift this a little bit warmer or cooler based upon the area in which I click within my image. I'm going to click right about there. It's not too cool, it's not too warm. It's then neutralized those values in my image as being the value of gray, an equal balance of the red, green, and blue factors found in this RGB image. That's our beginning point. Now let's go over and adjust some of the settings found here in the basic settings here to the right. The first thing I see that this image needs is a little bit of boost of vibrance. I find with my GoPro images that sliding the vibrance over really, really helps. That looks great. Next, let's bring up a little bit of clarity. Clarity will then resolve the detail in my midtones. Let's take this all the way over to the right. You can see it's a little bit too contrast. All the way to the left, a little too soft. But just a little bit of contrast in my midtones really snaps the image nicely. Next, I'm going to go immediately to shadows. Because this was photographed early in the morning and there's no direct sunlight, we want to give the illusion of sunlight by adjusting the shadows slider. Check this out. If I move this to the right, I can open up the detail in the shadows here in the foreground. Make it very, very dark, very, very light, but just a little bit of shadow adjustment. That looks great. Now, in combination with shadows, you can also adjust highlights. Check this out. I'm selecting the highlight and moving it to the left. Notice how it makes my clouds a little bit darker as I move here to the left or burns out the clouds as I move to the right. So you have a great way of separating the, the details found here in the highlights of the clouds or the details in the shadows of the foreground. See how I can separate the two without really having a mask. I've already made this image 10 times better just by adjusting the highlights, the shadows, the clarity, and the vibrance. Let's take this a little bit farther. I think I want to adjust targeted colors within this image. I'm going to go right up to this menu item right here, the HSL grayscale. I really, really like using this for targeting specific colors in an image that I want to enhance. For example, the luminance. I'm selecting the luminance tab. I want to make the green grass and trees a little bit brighter. If I go to the luminance tab, then select the greens, for example, and move them to the right Watch what happens here to the lawn. The lawn gets brighter, as if the sunshine's hitting it. To the left, making it darker. To the right, making it brighter. Let's see if that applies also to, for example, the blue sky. The blue darker, the blue lighter. So I really have an enormous amount of control over specific colors within my image. I want to make, for example, the yellows a bit darker or a bit lighter adjusting them like that. Not only can you adjust the luminance, you can also adjust the saturation. Let's select the saturation tab and let's make the tiles on the roof a little bit brighter. Notice how I can slide the orange over here to the right. I can go a little bit too far or make the tiles absolutely gray, but this targeted capability of highlighting those areas is fantastic. Now the reds down here on the Stanford logo look a little bit dull. If I select the red slider and move it to the right, I can bring out the brightness of those flowers here in the foreground. This is looking really great. Now, you're concerned about the fact that the rotor blades to my quadcopter exist here at the top of my image. Now, I could go through and try and paint those out with some of the capabilities found here in Adobe Camera Raw, like the Spot Removal Tool. But it's not necessary, because the next step is really critical for creating a panorama, and it will get rid of that problem. Of course, all of my images are currently selected, so anytime I make an adjustment to any of these sliders, it will affect all of them. If you're working on a single image, then you'll need to synchronize all of your images when you're done but I prefer the select all and then make my adjustments and then I know all of them are being adjusted at the same time. Okay, 
here's our next most important step. Right over here, under this icon, Lens Corrections. Selecting that, I can now go in, for example, Remove Chromatic Aberration, and that's really important with a super wide angle like this GoPro Hero 3 camera has. But right over here under Profile, check this out. Selecting Profile, then selecting Enable Lens Profile Corrections, watch what happens. It automatically makes the appropriate correction because the metadata in this particular image indicates that this is a GoPro Hero 3 Black Edition camera. That's amazing. So it's detecting the metadata and applying this new GoPro lens profile. Fantastic. Now by applying this profile, we're going to make it possible not only to get rid of the distortion found in this image, but it's going to make it possible to stitch all of these images together. Let's take a look at that before, here by turning the preview off here at the top, and then after this adjustment. Now what I like to do after I've made these color corrections and this distortion correction is actually go over here to this menu, the presets, and I'll actually save particular presets, in this case for a fairly dark, cloudy morning. I might save that here under the presets by going down here to this menu item right here, clicking, then selecting the items I'd like to save within this preset, naming it, and clicking OK. It's a great way to speed up the process of working on projects like this. OK, we're ready to move on to the process of merging these together. I'm going to click Done. As you can see here, it's going through each of the images and applying the settings for color correction as well as the lens distortion correction. Great. I'm going to select all of my images here in Adobe Bridge. Holding down the Shift key, I'm clicking here to the left and selecting all of them. Because now we want to merge these together into a single panorama. Here from the Tools menu down to Photoshop, you could select Photo Merge, and this would automatically merge them together using an automatic process of detecting what type of panorama you were working on. But I highly recommend the official Russell Brown technique, where I'm going to load the files into a Photoshop layers and then go through the process step by step, which gives me much more control over the processing of these images. Now let's wait for these images to all come in here into Adobe Photoshop CC into a layered Photoshop document. OK, there are all my images loaded into Adobe Photoshop in a single layered document. Next, let's select all of the images in this set. With this first image selected here at the top, holding down my Shift key, selecting the image here at the bottom, then I selected all of them. Now, because of the camera lens correction that we applied, we should be able to easily blend these images together. Here from the Edit menu, I'm going down to Auto Align Layers, right here. Now what's great about my Russell Brown technique is that it allows me to go through the process of aligning and blending the images as single steps that I can then control and I can experiment with different types of projections here and do an undo and try another one. If I were to use the automatic method, I wouldn't have this capability of running experiments. And that's what I like. But I'm going to tell you the secret. Right here is the secret to merging GoPro 3 Hero images together, and that's the spherical projection technique. We can then use this technique to get fantastic results. Let's give it a try. I'm going to click OK. Now it's going to process all of those images and merge them together into a single panorama. This process of merging the images together is actually using the camera lens profile that we applied to get the results you see here. And that's how this magic actually works. This looks amazing. Now we do see some of the rotor blades in the sky, but we're not going to worry about those. Let's take a look at this. I'm holding down my spacebar key, and then I can move my hand tool here to scroll back and forth to take a look 
at the blending of all of these images together. <laughs> really, really amazing. And it's that camera profile that makes this possible. Okay, what's our next step? I'm going to go and blend these images together. Notice that they're still all selected here to the right in the Layers tab panel. I'm going to go back up to the Edit menu and this time down to Auto Blend Layers. I'm going to be blending a panorama with seamless tones and colors. Now watch how magically the rotors, the blades in the sky, will vanish. Because of this process, it's looking at those blades and sees them as an out-of-focus element and this process will then eliminate them and instead place in the more in-focus areas of the clouds in the background. Check it out. Fantastic. Okay, what's our next step? In this particular project, I noticed that my horizon is a little bit distorted. Let's remove this distortion. I'm going right over here to my Layers tabbed panel, and from the Flyout menu, I'm going to select Merge Layers. I want to merge all of my layers into one layer, just like that. Now, I'm going to right-click here at this spot to reveal the Convert to Smart Object selection right here. It's very important to convert this into a smart object so that the next adjustments we make are non-destructive. This gives us the ability to go back in multiple times and make adjustments without harming any of the pixels in the process. It's a really great function. So we've turned that into a smart object. Let's zoom back out a bit so we can see our entire panorama. And we want to get rid of this slight arc here to the horizon. The first thing we're going to do is go to a great new feature found under the Filter menu, and it's called Adaptive Wide Angle. Check this out. With Adaptive Wide Angle, I can apply different types of corrections to this image. Once again, I'm going to zoom back out a bit so I can see this entire panorama. Then notice that it's automatically selected a correction type of panorama. This is pretty good, and this is the one we're going to choose. But notice it could also have mapped this to a fisheye distortion, to a perspective distortion, or to the panorama. If you're shooting a full panorama that begins and ends at the same location, a full 360, and only when you're using a 360 could you select the full spherical. We're not doing that in this case. We're selecting a panorama. I like the distortion map that this gives. Now, check this out. I can scale this down a bit with the scale slider here so I can see my entire image. Then, in the upper left-hand corner, I'm going to edit this with the constraint tool. This is a fantastic tool that allows me to straighten the horizon in the easiest possible way. Now, sometimes I can click here on the right and drag all the way to the left. But in this particular case, I can see that the line is turning red. That means I should be able to go to about halfway. Now notice I'm adjusting the line up and down until the blue line should be right on the horizon, just like that. I'm going to hold down the Shift key at this time to constrain that horizon to a perfect horizontal line. Now watch as I hold down the shift key and let go with the mouse. It should then snap this area to be perfectly horizontal. I'm going to click once again here in the center, move to the left, hold down the shift key one more time to snap that side. Did you see that? The simple line with the shift key then takes the line we've drawn with the tool in the upper left-hand corner and makes it perfectly horizontal. Now, check this out. Notice that the Stanford logo here isn't perfectly straight. I want to straighten this so that it points directly at the viewer. If I once again click and drag right to the center point here, 
hold down my shift key, I will now make a perfect vertical. Check this out. Did you see that? I'll do a Command Z before, Command Z, and after. It's distorting it so that it's pointing that directly at us with a vertical. Enormous controls with just these simple three lines that I've drawn, and I like those. We could go through and make additional adjustments, for example, straightening a building or straightening a road. But in general, I think this works really well. I'm now going to scale this back up like this with the scale slider. I can use the move tool here to the left and reposition this and move it. For example, I want a little bit more foreground than I do sky and then scale again. So some of my cropping can happen here in this step. And I can reposition and center things like this. I'm not going to worry about these transparent areas right now. That's our final step to correct that. I'm going to click OK. Let's see what this looks like. So there's the removal of that slight distortion to our horizon. We can, of course, go back in and make additional adjustments because this is non-destructive. Double-clicking on my adaptive wide angle will reveal my exact same tools in position. I can go in, target a particular line, make adjustments, then click OK, and those adjustments will then apply themselves back onto the image. That's what's great. Now, Let's go in and crop this some more. Using my crop tool here to the left, I can go in and center this up just like this, and then double click inside the image to crop this just like that. I'm going to bring this up in size so I can see this. That looks great. Now, there's one additional item we want to add to this to really make this image sing. I'm going to go back into my image by going up to the Filter menu and selecting Camera Raw Filter. That's right, I can adjust this image with Camera Raw Controls even after I've merged it all together. So in this particular case, I want to add a special effect. With this tool here in the top, the Radial Filter right here, I want to go in and add a highlight. I can adjust my settings here to the right and then simply click and drag and watch what happens. I can add a highlight right here in the middle to draw my viewer's eye right to the center of my image. I can then go in and make additional exposure adjustments to make this brighter or darker. I want it slightly brighter. I want to bring up my highlights a bit and really put a spotlight on that area as if the sun is hitting that area. I can go in and add multiples of these. Let's go in and add a second one. In this case, I want to have a little bit of a highlight here on the logo right there. And I can see what this looks like before my adjustments or after my adjustments by selecting the preview item at the top. Looks great. I'm going to click OK. Once again, that's a non-destructive adjustment I've made to this image, and it's really looking fantastic. Our final step would be to crop away the additional areas here to the left and to the right where the transparency is showing through, but let's just finish this all off and fill that area in with content-aware fill. Now, in order to fill these areas in here to the left and the right, these transparent areas, with content-aware fill, I need to be working on the actual image and not on a smart object. In order to do that, I'm going to create a new layer here in the lower right-hand corner by clicking on this icon. Then I'm going to use a fantastic super user tip and technique to merge everything together into one layer. And that's the Option, Command, and the Shift key all selected in combination with the letter E. We'll then merge everything together. So that's on the Macintosh. On the PC, that's the Alt Control shift and the letter E to merge everything into a single image here at the top. And now, once I have this image selected here at the top, I can hold down my Command key on the Macintosh 
or control key on the PC, hover over this, notice the icon change, click on it, and it will load that as a selection. I'm going to go to the select menu and select inverse because I want the area as you see here to be selected, the transparent area. Once again, up to the select menu, down to modify, expand, and I want a bit of overlap, and in this case, about five pixels of overlap. And if I zoom in on this area, you can see the five pixels here of overlap. And finally, with the Shift key selected and the Delete key selected, I can bring up the Fill command and fill with Content Aware. Let's click OK and let's see how this does. In most cases, this does a fantastic job of filling in these areas magically, as you see here. Let's zoom back out and take a look at this. So I've filled in all the gaps. Let's deselect Command D, filled in the gaps of the surrounding area, as you see here. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys. It was an extensive tutorial, but with an enormous amount of information for creating a really high quality panorama from a GoPro Hero 3 camera combined with a DJI Phantom quadcopter. Get out there and take panoramas in the sky.